Hello, 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 and welcome to your Monday Night Tech and Chill Show Unplugged. I'm your host, Ben, and of course, we are live. Yes, this is your weekly Monday Night Tech and Chill Show Unplugged, where we pretty much gather up all the latest news in the world of tech and pretty much discuss them. And tonight, we are going to be talking about the Honor Magic VS. Yeah, Honor Magic VS, and it's a very interesting approach to affordable because it looks like they are trying to really do what samsung is choosing not to do with their foldables in terms of the form factor the gapless we're going to discuss it in depth but you know what yeah this is is going to be a very very interesting one and i thought you know what, let's discuss and let's talk about the honor magic vs and see if with what they're bringing if it's really a z fold 4 killer i'm not sure it's entirely that but you know what? It's always worth discussing regardless. So I appreciate everyone joining. We are going to be talking about Honor Magic VS tonight. And apologies, my voice has gone a little bit. And energy is a bit low, but I'm going to try and push through it for you all as my audience, aka Team TLS, The Tech Lover Squad. Um, let me go on Twitter and just retweet to say that we are, of course, live. Our apologies is a bit of a late one tonight. I know usually we do stream at 8 p.m. GMT, Greenwich Mean Time, UK time. We are live. But I was suffering a bit of low energy. I needed to nap. I needed to do other stuff. I need to record and just do some other edits. Um, and um, yeah, that's the reason why we are a bit late tonight. I was going to cancel the stream, but I said, you know what? We gotta dig we gotta dig deep. We've got to dig deep and still stream and get it done. Okay, 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 okay. Let me go on GSM Arena and then we are gonna do a content recap as well of just the stuff that we've done throughout the week and also pretty much just catch up with you all and kind of just have a mini QA and see that changes and plans have come around very, very interestingly when it comes to what we're doing next year okay so i'm gonna put this here and um i will jump into the chat very very shortly let me go into studio mode google chrome here 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 bring up the honor magic vs and let's see who is in the chat Oh, navigating on Windows is just so, 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 so much better. Extra bow, bow, bow. <laughs> 4K Crispy, a.k.a. Mr. Craig Bailey himself, Mr. Portland, Jamaica in the building. What's good, man? Hope you're well. Hope you're safe. Thanks for joining, man. I appreciate you being here as well. You, Lil B, Monday, watch me and... Well, I'm not even going to respond to that. Shout out to TZ in the chat. And Mr. Chris Wilmfirst. What's good, man? Tech and chill. It's been a while since I've seen you on here, man. Maybe it's because of it being a slightly late one. So managed to catch you in here. But I do appreciate your time and you being in here as well. Please, as always, do let me know if the audio is fine, if the audio is coming through clear. Again, apologies for the voice, the octaves. I can't be as vocal tonight. I really have to just measure, um, look after the strain in my voice. It's it's really just unfortunate, but it's it's kind of um, <laughs> off the back of a of a, of a crazy um, <laughs> Friday session. Shout out to the guys over at Team Pixel because yeah, they they really they really did a number on us, man. The fact that we managed to get into Box Park for the screening of the England versus USA match, really really appreciate the Pixel. Team Pixel Fan Zone VIP session there, man. Really, really love the guys over at Influencer PR and, and Google. Really, really, really appreciate it. Hit that like button, indeed. Do hit that like button. Do hit that like button. Really, really appreciate it. Which is the better overall phone, the Pixel 7 Pro or the iPhone 14 Pro Max? I'm going to say the Pixel 7 Pro, Um, personally, in my opinion. Audio is clear. Thank you very much, Kobe. I will see you tomorrow. Um, make sure your laptop and everything is edit ready. The late one's always easier for me to catch. I'm not usually in or available, so glad to catch one again. I appreciate that. It's it's always hard to know what time works best for everyone. Um, you know, 8 p.m. GMT UK time tends to be like a happy medium of not being too late, not too early. 
But then it's 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 a hard one. It's a hard one. I've got to consider neighbours and just the noise of my octaves and how loud I can be and you know how vocal I can be at times. But hey, we move and we work with it and we 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 pattern it up as we go. Um but regardless, I do appreciate everyone that is available at this time to be here. And um, it's always, always an interesting and a fun one when it comes to the Tech and Chill show on Plugged. Oh, yeah. Booyah. Okay. So we are going to be talking about the Honor Magic VS. Uh, we've got uh, Mirza says, um, hello. Hello to you too. Welcome and thank you for joining. Really, really appreciate it. Um, okay. Where are we? 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 So we've got Honor official. I don't think they've got any official kind of trailers of um of the uh, uh launch. Okay, live. No. Okay, we're gonna put that there as well, and we're gonna see what we can look at in terms of this feature sets um let's bring up the website as well for honor um uh cam one and chrome so we've got gsm arena we're going to go through that we've got an official on our website and also we do oh sorry um let's go to honor's official website Okay, phones on a magic. Uh, no. Ooh. On a magic VS. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. So we have that here as well. It says buy. Okay, sure. That's fine. We've got a nice overview. Yep, with all the animations, which is obviously what makes it really, really nice to look through and whatnot. I'm glad the audio is clear. And we are pretty much going to be talking about this right now. So we had the Honor Magic 5, uh, the Honor Magic VS. This is a device that was pretty much announced as of um the 23rd of november so if we look back that was five days ago yeah 23rd of november five days ago 23rd of november is um last week wednesday just to be specific in terms of the timing and whatnot and what we've got um and they had their event so it's a china release at the moment they had an event we did have a couple of youtubers um you know obviously release their videos on it and whatnot and here's where we're looking at in terms of the honor magic vs and form factor already is something that i'm really really digging if we're obviously start, obviously start from the outside and work our way in the design and form factor really speaks to me because the outer display is a 21 by 9 aspect ratio thank goodness 21 by 9 aspect ratio really is pretty much as close to what you're getting here with the 20 by 9 aspect ratio or 21 or 19 by 19.5 by 9 aspect ratio that you get on these traditional solid state smartphones, which I'm really appreciative of. And it's 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 the one that you really want to be working with. Oh goodness. Apologies. I think my live stream is buffering. I'm not sure if it's buffering. I think it's behaving now. Um Apologies if the live stream um, doesn't, uh, what do you call it, work as well as it does. The home internet decided not to connect, so I'm having to tether off the Pixel 7 Pro. Oh, today is really, really mundane, but we push through, we go, we go, we go, we go, we go. So, form factor, definitely, definitely appreciative. And obviously the fact that they really put the weight down on it as well. You put a weight down on it, 261 grams, ultra lightweight on a Magic VS, and it's equipped with a large 5,000 milliamp hour battery. That's just another win. That is seriously another win. And this is this is this is the good thing about just going big, you know, providing long battery life, all day usage with our innovations that overcome exhaust. Okay, I love I love this. I love the gapless 
design. It's thin. USB C, of course, the speakers. This is this is a based on first impressions. This is a really good look. This is a really really good look. So what it looks to what like you know it looks like a super light gearless hinge, right? This this is this is this is impressive. Combined with the cutting edge single piece casting method, Honor's own super light gearless hinge reduces the number of components of support structure. Okay, now this probably tells me that there isn't a flex hinge feature there because of this, but I might be wrong, right? Single piece casting processing technology, aerospace grade, um, aerospace grade materials, one piece support structure adapts um, aerospace grade materials 62% lighter um, than traditional materials. This is looking really impressive. I, I've, got, I've got to give it to them. I've got to give it to them. And it says, uh, magic in the screens. Flagship dual screens are great protector for the eyes. 6.45 inches for the outer display. And it's a 21 by 9 aspect ratio. This, this is a win. This is such a win. And Samsung can easily do this, but they've, they've been choosing not to for different reasons based on IP rating, protection against elements. But at the same time, I look at this and I'm like, this is just much more usable. This is just so much more usable. And, and from what I'm seeing, this is great. This is great. This is really, really great. When you open it up, you get a 7.9 inch aspect, um, um, display. Obviously, you've got a whole punch camera there as well. And apparently the outer display is 120 hertz. The inner display is 90 hertz. I think 90 hertz is still okay. It's, it's, a, it's a decent enough compromise and balancing act right auto dim and display yada 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 and obviously we've got the 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 cameras that's out there as well the colors are looking great um oh this orange one's nice you know this orange one is really nice actually let's see if the black is a matte finish nope we don't want that ain't nobody going for glossy oh this looks like a frosted matte finish this is more of like a tanned leather finish. And then this is glossy. Yeah, we, we ain't messing with glossy. But I do like the contrasting orange or gold on a logo that's on there as well. It's it's looking it's looking good. It's really looking good. I, I'm, I'm just basing it on just absorbing it all in. This is looking good. Especially that gapless design with how it closes. Yeah, I'm feeling this. Obviously, Snapdragon with the 8 Plus Gen 1, it's not their most officially powerful processor, but it is still one of the most powerful because obviously we just had the announcement of the 8 Gen 2. We've done lots of breakdowns on the channel in regards to the 8 Gen 2 and just where we are and what we're expecting in terms of devices. I do see you in there, geeky stuff, aka Mr. Paul himself. Thank you for joining. I will acknowledge everything there. We're just pretty much breaking down and I appreciate you coming through. Obviously, the 8 Plus Gen 1 is great because it is running on 4 nanometer TSMC process, first generation, compared to Samsung's um, 4 nanometer process on the 8 Gen 1. So it's definitely a much better option in there. And I'm glad they've been able to put the 8 Plus Gen 1 in there, which is great. It's, it's, it's part for the course in terms of the performance right now into next year, which is really, really good. <sighs> right, what we got, what we got, what we got? 5,000 milliamp hour battery. Yeah, this this is impressive. This is impressive. Five thousand milliamp hours is par for the course. Um, you know, we, would we want six thousand milliamp um, ideally in foldables? Yes, because we are powering two displays. But at least hitting that five thousand mark is impressive. Really, really good to see that they've been able to do it. And of course, you know, the amount of R and D that they've poured over the years with these, you know, the Chinese phone manufacturers, they do this really well. They've poured a lot of R&D in making sure that in terms of battery preservation, battery health, and battery charging, this is something that they excel at really, really well. So, you know, shout out to them. This, again, I, I'm being dead serious. This is impressive. This is impressive stuff. I like the look of it so far. This is a good look. This is a good look. Um, there's no mention of wireless charging. I might be wrong, but there's no mention of wireless charging. But we'll look through that. Let's look at the camera. So the camera hardware and specs, what we've got here is the main sensor that is using the IMX 800, 54 megapixel main sensor. It's got the equivalent full frame focal length and you know field of view of 27 millimeters, and it does have an F1.9 aperture. 
very interesting look. You do have a 3x optical zoom that can go up to 30x digital with an f2.4 aperture and OIS for optical image stabilization. And then we've got the ultra wide, which is actually a 50 megapixel high resolution ultra wide with macro capabilities built in. That I did not know. That it's that that's a really good camera array. That's a really good camera array. Now they haven't stated what the resolution is on that optical zoom, and I'm suspecting it's maybe an eight megapixel sensor. But we're gonna go through that as well. You've got a flicker sensor as well. That's interesting. F two point oh aperture on the ultra wide with a thirteen millimeter wide field of view in terms of the focal length, and it's one hundred and twenty two um, degrees in terms of the ultra wide FOV field of view. Um, HD macro shooting. Wow, that's 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 a good look. And obviously, double the front-facing camera, double the strength. Dual front-facing cameras, which is very, very nice. Obviously, you've got the inner display and the outer display. And, um, you know, there's examples of there in terms of how you can capture. Again, I, I always want to test these out myself personally and see what's good, right? But at the 0.5x um, field of view, this is a great look. And then obviously, the final details... I think this is this is the first, I might be wrong, this is one of the first foldables I've seen. I don't even want to, I don't even want to announce and think what I thought this gold thingy was before I realized what it was, but we're going to move on, right? But this is probably one of the first foldables I've seen that actually has macro, cap macro taking capabilities built in, which is very, very good. Right. Okay. Digital zoom, 1, 3, 10, 30x. We love to see it. I think, I think, you know, having a minimum of 3x zoom, a 3x zoom is just so clutch, especially for portrait mode as well. And obviously you can use the rear cameras at your, as your front facing cameras as well. Wow. Wow. Wow, 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 wow. It can be go to specs and we're just going to go through the specs rundown and I will give my thoughts and opinions and we'll have a discussion in the comment section below as well. Um, you know, the depth of it when it's folded as well, unfolded 6.1, 4.9. Um, you know, the weight is really good relative to what the device and the form factor is. The display for the outer display is really, really good at the size, as well as most importantly, the aspect ratio. And also the inner display is pretty much close to eight inches. That's what she said. And you do have OLED displays for the inner and the outer display, and you do have 120 hertz for the exterior, which is great. 90 hertz is still great for the inner folding OLED display as well. You've got the resolutions out there, which is 2560 by 1080 for the exterior, and then 2272 by 1984 for the interior. And obviously you've got the foldable OLED and the interior and your normal traditional. Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1, which we know all about that. Android 12, really? Oh, come on guys, really? Magic OS 7.0. Okay, we'll, we'll discuss my thoughts on that as well. In terms of the SKU, stock keeping unit configuration, SKUs, eight gigabytes of RAM, 256 gigabytes of storage, 12 gigs, 256, 12 gigs of RAM, 512 gig storage. Apparently there's meant to be an ultimate edition that's gonna come with 16 gigabytes of RAM as well. Um, and I suspected it that this would be an eight megapixel optical zoom, which is a shame. That means the zoom camera potentially, yeah, the zoom camera definitely can't do 8K video. Yeah, which, which is unfortunate. So no, not 8K video, 4K video. Because for 4K, you do need about 12 megapixels. Well, technically you need 8.3 megapixels, but the sensor needs to be, you know, 12 megapixels for there to be a little bit of room and stuff to work with. So um, yeah, image resolution, as you can see right here, video resolution 4K measured in a standard. But again, I, the 4K resolution is only gonna be exclusive, potentially mainly on the main sensor, Potentially on the ultra wide, but again, definitely not on the zoom camera, which is unfortunate. But then again, the fold forward, no, the fold forward does do 4K on the ultra wide and the zoom. It just doesn't do 4K 60 on the ultra wide. Interesting. 60 megapixel front facing camera. Um, I don't know if that works out to be the same for both the inner and outer display, but that is a great resolution. It looks to be able to do only up to 1080p, which is unfortunate. Again, not doing 4K on the selfie. So we're starting to pick the fins out there. Um, you do have two physical SIM card slots. Charging is excellent, um, which is great to see. Two nano slots as well. USB Type-C and it's USB 3.1 Generation 1. Um, and what we have here. So let, let's move over to GSM Arena and let's just try and dissect 
what we can right here. Let's 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 bring up a comparison with the Fold 4, right? Because obviously that's going to be the direct comparison that we're going to be looking at. We're going to be going through differences. And when we highlight the differences, we'll see that here. This is what we've got right now. We've got this in a sense that in terms of what was um, announced, we're going to be expecting this somewhere in December. Obviously the Fold 4 has been out since August, 2022. Um, and it sets the pace in terms of what it does globally. Um, what we've got right now is 120 hertz on both. The display configuration, in my opinion, actually favors a bit more on the Honor Magic VS. Now, apparently there is meant to be S Pen support, not S Pen support, but Honor's Pen. Honor's meant to be having a pen support for their display as well, for the inner display, which is going to be interesting to see. But I don't know if that's going to be the same for the outer display as well. Again, you've got Android 13 on the Fold 4. In terms of software, I think the, the Fold 4 will do a better job in terms of really putting itself down because Samsung have just been dominating when it comes to software. In general, when it comes to monthly updates, latest version and latest generation of Android, as well as their One UI optimizations for the larger screen form factor when it comes to foldables as well. I, I'm, I'm just way more confident in Samsung in this position where this is where they're going to really come through. And again, if you look at durability as well, you've still got to give Samsung credit for the fact that you do have ingress protection X8, where you do have water resistance up to 1.5 meters for 30 minutes. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's a very, it's a very great one to have stylus support as well. I think the stylus support might be for the ultimate edition of the on a magic VS, but um, don't quote me on that. I'm not hundred percent too sure just yet. So you know, there is a one terabyte option that you've got with the Fold 4 as well, with the base storage that comes. Um, the camera configuration does have better options when it comes to video. You know, especially having a much more, not much more, but a high resolution telephoto zoom, which allows the cohesion of having 4K video on the main sensor, the 3X zoom and the ultra wide. You have that limitation with the 8 megapixel on obviously the, um, the, the zoom on the on a magic vs which is which is unfortunate which is unfortunate um give or take what you're seeing in terms of the dis the display configuration with the cameras you know the under display camera is less intrusive when it comes to having a fully immersive display whereas obviously the 60 megapixel hole punch camera is going to be way much more reliable in terms of the quality that you're going to be getting with the inner display but the outer display is also high resolution for the resolution of the camera on the um on a magic vs but again resolution doesn't fully account for everything especially past 12 megapixels you really really gotta get in and really see how the processing is like wi-fi 6e compatible as well bluetooth 5.2 and you don't get wi-fi 6e with the Honor magic vs um you do have a slightly faster usb-c cable you know potentially much better battery life because of the larger battery cell um yeah, reverse wired, so you don't get wireless charging on a Honor Magic VS, as suspected. And I don't think you get a flex hinge mode as well. But a, the biggest interesting thing is that the conversion to euros, the Honor Magic VS is about 1,050 euros. It's a, it's a very, 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 very compelling approach. And it's a very compelling approach for the sheer fact that what they are doing to bring this forward and what they are really bringing to showcase i'm 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 compelled i'm compelled and I, i've got i've got to i've got to give it to them this is looking really 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 interesting in terms of what honor are bringing to the table when it comes to their approach to foldables what's my thoughts my thoughts are that I still stand by how the foldable form factor should really go, right? Certain companies have shown their hand in what they want the form factor to be. And I actually agree with all of them. And I think foldables need to replicate. And I, and I mean fold, foldables, not the, the fold form factor, not the flip form factor. I think the fold form factor needs to replicate what we have in the ultra plus and normal size form factor. Here's why I say that. Samsung have this with the last year, if you saw, or let's just say earlier this year, you saw what they did to replicate the S series to the Tab S series. The Galaxy S series had three models, the Galaxy S22 Ultra, S22 Plus, and S22. 
the Tab S8 had the Tab S8 Ultra, Tab S8 Plus, Tab S8. I think the Fold needs to have a Fold Ultra, a Fold Plus, and a Galaxy Fold. Why? The normal Fold needs to be of the form factor of what we saw of the Oppo Find N. I felt the Find N when I went to MWC this year in February, and the form factor is nice, compact, wide. It just makes sense. The Plus form factor should be that of the Fold 4 right here. Right? The plus form factor should be that of the Fold 4 right here. That's the plus form factor, right? Pretty much mimicking and re replicating what we have with the Galaxy um, S22 Plus. And then form factors like what we're seeing here with the Honor Magic VS and also the Vivo Fold, Vivo X Fold Plus and whatnot. That in my, that in my opinion should be what is classed as the ultra form factor. Right, and, and I think that's how it should be scaling. For me, that ultra form factor in terms of the larger form factor with what they're displaying right now and what they're showcasing, I'm in total agreement with it just because of the fact that it enables things like being able to have a large battery capacity, right? A large 5,000 milliamp hour battery to work with. It allows the ability to have a gapless design. It allows the ability to... Um, how can I put it? it? Allows the ability to um, allows the ability to have the larger outer display for it to be use usable. The gapless design, a bigger inner display that goes from almost what seven seven and a half to pretty much eight inches. That's what she said. Um, it just allows for just more, right? And you can actually distribute the weight really well to the point where it's still very usable and it's not compromised it's not a compromised experience uh, hold on let me just switch the internet see if yo 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 apologies 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 uh it's 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 really mundane today i was trying to switch to the home internet but it's just not working can't wait to move out of this place and have fiber <laughs> yeah so I just think I just think on a taking that ultra version approach to the foldable form factor, it just resonates me. I, I just want that. I'm a foldable user, but I'm I'm very, very I always, 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 always come back to the point where I'm very fortunate that my day job really just allows me to use all these new devices back to back to back. I'm gonna talk about it, but we you know we've got some devices that have come through that we're gonna go through as well. Um and I'm pretty much just gonna um, you know do a content recap and just let you know what's happening, what's going on as well. But if if I wasn't testing smartphones as well as still liking smartphones as, you know, obviously one of my main pieces of tech that I really enjoy, I would just use a folding device and just call it a day. And I would really commit to having a case with an S Pen holder and something. I would just use a foldable device and really just call it a day. I'm, I'm dead serious. You see, but I have to try all, the, all these different phones and I enjoy the process of having to try all these different phones, you know, reviewing them, getting to grips with them, you know, all the benefits that come with it, I enjoy it. But as a foldable form factor, I, I really just want Samsung to go ultra, just go ultra, be unapologetically big, do a 20 by 9, 21 by 9 aspect ratio out to display, 6.4, 6.5 inches, right? 120 hertz, a large 5,000 milliamp hour plus battery, faster charging, wireless charging, gapless design, IP rating. I want that. And 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 where I like what Honor have done here is that where they've fallen short, they've let it reflect on a price. Again, whether this is going to actually be a global foldable device outside of China is always going to be the question to be asked and answered. And this is where Samsung really just does well. They put their money where their mouth is when it comes to making all their product lineup accessible on a global level, right? Some regional benefits to some devices like the M series, but regardless, most of their key products across the S to the Z to the A series are all available globally, you know? And that kind of level of reach in terms of also having it, not just the buyout right, but the carrier incentive, the trading incentives, as well as obviously the durability in terms of things like IP rating and whatnot. This is where these devices are still not completely fold 
killers. They're just not. They're just not, right? But I will not be lying to myself. As someone that is a fold connoisseur, I really hope Samson gets to a point where they scale their foldable lineup in that way. A fold. A fold plus and a fold ultra. And that ultra, we want it all. We want the 10x periscope zoom. We still want the 3x, right? <clears throat> we still want the main 108 megapixel sensor that is high grade, high quality. And we want the ultra. We want all of them to shoot 4K60 as well as the selfie camera. We want that ultra experience. Like what we have with the S22 Ultra, the ultra line of the F series. So F of the S series. We we just want that in the foldable. And if it means that we have to get a second, a, 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 a third variant, and for the ones that want it but don't want it to feel too intrusive and have a form factor like the Oppo Find N that follows in line with the Galaxy S22 series, then what you then basically have is their Z series all having an Ultra Plus a normal model. Their S series having an Ultra Plus a normal model. And their Tab S series having an Ultra Plus a normal model. You see what I'm saying there? It just makes sense. It just makes sense. You've seen other brands do it, Oppo with the Find N, Samsung with the Fold 4, and then Vivo with the X Fold Plus, as well as obviously what we're seeing now with Honor with the Magic, um, the Honor Magic VS. It can be done and it's what we want to see. But overall, I'm actually very, very impressed by first impressions. I'm really intrigued. And if there's a way that I can get hands on with it, which I'm sure it will happen at MWC, um, I'll, I'll share my thoughts and do my thoughts and opinions on it as well. Whew. <clears throat> apologies, apologies. My voice, man. I've got to manage it. I've got to manage it. I've got to manage it. Let's jump into the let's jump into the chat. Chris says, "Neighbor, sounds like I'll get to need to send you a few more of the sound panels." <laughs> well, those are for reverb, isn't it? Is is for de echo and de reverb, not necessarily noise cancellation. Um, speed underscore car, what's good, man? Appreciate you being here as well. Yes, Mister Geeky stuff. What's good, Paul? Appreciate you being here as per um, Pixel Seven Pro. Indeed, Pixel Seven Pro. We've got it, man. We got to write her. Um, is there a bump in the middle when you open it up? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. It's very similar to the um to the Mix Fold Two. Okay, okay. I think you've had hands on with the Mix Fold Two, right? I actually do like the glossy back. Boy, you are alone on that one, my friend. <laughs> I can't believe it has a five thousand milliamp hour battery. Same. And, and this is, again, this is the benefit of having a large form factor ultra variant where it's just big. You, you can fit that extra 600 milliamp in there. It's really impressive. And I'm really, really glad they've pulled it off. Very nice. The screen on paper looks really good. 100% DCI-P3. Yes, yes, on paper. And again, it is always going to be a relative case to... Um, how you're going to experience it in real world, right? Brightness um, and just the usability, but I don't see this not being a usable display. I see this being a really, really good display experience where I think it might even favor more because of the outer display just being much, much closer to the form factor that we are used to having, right? I could definitely get on board with that. Um, you can get whatever size you want from any brand. Yeah, reverb, yes, but if you stack them. <laughs> LMAO, laugh my behind off. Yes, you are alone in that. We ain't, we ain't for that glossy life no more, especially glossy black. Oh, for product shots, those glossy black finishes are terrible. Terrible. I would definitely copy if it came to the States. Guess what? It's not, unfortunately. And that is just a tough deal when it comes to these devices, you know? So, yeah. 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 All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. You know what? We've only got one topic for today. So we're pretty much going to keep it nice and short. And we are pretty much going to be talking all things contact related. So I've got a new device in there. The Poco F4. G2. Shout out to the guys over at Xiaomi. Um, let's go through the content recap for the week. Mm, where are we? Content recap for the week. So as you know, um, I've tried to you know, obviously take it a bit easy, ease my way in. And um, yes, 
Shout out to Caseology. My Pixel 7 Pro one month late reviews live. We'll be working on a Pixel 7 review. And I've got other reviews coming in for the MacBook Pro as well. Um, <laughs> so crazy. Like I updated, I upgraded. Basically, I went from a base model 14 inch MacBook Pro um, to now a 24 core M1 Max, 32 gigs of RAM, and one terabyte of storage. And I'm not even going to mention the price that I've got that for. Shout out to Kyle. Shout out to Brandon as well. Shout out to my guys over at John Lewis, White City. You know, I appreciate you lot, man. Like, you lot really, really patting it up as well. Uh, Matty Cobbs has also got his laptop, so he's going to be more edit ready as well. Um, yeah, it's, 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 it's a spec up, but you're going to be watching a review that's coming out on that very, very shortly as well. So watch out for that. Really, really happy with this review and how it came out as well. Definitely catch up and watch that. Really, really appreciate support on it. And shout out to Case to Five for, you know, um, supporting on this video as well. It makes doing these reviews, you know, way, 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 way more worthwhile. Um, and um, I'm glad that I was able to get that together. So definitely go give that a watch as well. But the most important thing was the fact that I was over at the Xiaomi HQ in Reading for Black Friday, last week Friday. And what a great, way to really get it off and indirectly as well i've got to give props to geeky stuff he's in the chat like a lot of your support has really allowed me to kind of link up with the guys over at jami and i really really appreciate it shout out to lucas as well shout out to nino as well great vibe and energy i re i thoroughly thoroughly had fun man a lot of what i do i always say being in front of the camera and getting to talk tech i know that scares a lot of people and that's the part that people dread and they love editing i'm the other way around if I can avoid editing as much as possible to be in front of the camera to do this and vibe, this is where my energies are. And, you know, shout out to them. Um, I'm going to be picking winners. We are doing three giveaways. We've got um, Xiaomi's, um, one of Xiaomi's, uh, the free T Pro earbuds. We're giving that away on the YouTube channel. So definitely leave a comment on this. Someone's already left a comment on this. For the Instagram audience, and I'm going to update this description as well. For the Instagram audience, we are giving away the Xiaomi Smart Air Fryer as well. Hey, literally, you cannot go wrong. And on top of that, the Twitter audience have got the Mi Band 7. So, hey, New Year's resolution to help you get to exercise a smartwatch is something you can't go wrong. This stream was also done in collaboration with Xiaomi in terms of on their official Xiaomi UK website, um, UK YouTube channel as well. Um... I really want to be, the, the more I can get to do stuff like this, the better, man. I really, really had fun. Um, Friday was just one of the best days ever. From just the event with Google, going to Reading to see Xiaomi, linking up with people, obviously getting the Poco phone as well. We're going to be doing a video on that as well. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. I, I'm, I'm lost for words. I, I live for days like this where I get really, really, really motivated. So go, I, I I'll update the description, but definitely go on my Instagram post for the collaboration I did with Xiaomi UK for Black Friday. A smart air fryer is being given away on there. What you basically, it's just for my UK audience. What it is, is basically you will be given a code to 100% purchase the product for free. Makes, you know, so it's a code that you use on Xiaomi's website. And then you're able to just get a full discount of the product and it will be pretty much shipped out to you as you order it with your details. So remember the air fryer is more of a lifestyle product. I think that's used Instagram more. I do a lot of earbud reviews on the channel as well. So I thought the earbuds would be best given away on the YouTube channel. And for the Insta for, and for the Twitter, Twitter is kind of like an active place for me. So the smart band is there. Great suggestion from the guys. And I really hope I just continue this relationship with Jamie in terms of working with them. I really rock with brands that really just work with channels that are kind of like micro to upcoming size like mine. Not too small, but definitely nowhere near big as what you would see in the six figures or seven figure channels. And I really, really appreciate it. Obviously today we've got that in there as well. And, um, you know, over at Sam Mobile, we've got content that we've done, obviously, with the S22 versus the Pixel 7 Pro camera comparison. Definitely go check out and give us some support on there as well. And, um, yeah, that's kind of really been the content recap for the week, which has been all good. Again, shout out to um, the graphic designer, Sam. He has christmas me up. I love this. I'm... For anyone that doesn't know me, I'm a sucker for Christmas and the 
holiday season, Christmas season updates to the channel banner and the display picture. I wish it could stay there forever. But yeah, from now all the way into the new year, I'm loving this. Up until the 6th of January, I'll keep this there until we do a rebrand for the channel going into next year. This is a good look. I love it. And um, thank you, Sam. Thank you. Thank you very much. What else have we got? 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 I don't think there's much else, people. I don't think there's much else. I think we can just jump into the chat and have a and a So we're 41 minutes in. Ask me anything. Ask me anything. Let's have a look into the chat and see what's good. Uh, looks like it will shape up to be an amazing flagship, but what carries in UK will stop them? Only one that comes to mind would be three. Yeah, three network will be the one that really backs honor in that sense. Um, again, this is always going to be the difference maker from what we have with what Samsung have, which it's it's a very extensive carrier network support, which is really good. You could import if you wanted. Yes, you could. But then it's a China only model. You don't have Google Play services, you know, warranty, carrier support. Now, I remember Geeky stuff, he had he had issues with certain SIM cards not giving him 5G, 4G. It can be a very, very tandemonious experience to go through that. So uh, you, you really just have to call it and see how much you really, really want it. But yeah, there's also an option, but I'm wondering, will it support the network bands and carriers? Yep, exactly. Air fryer? No, my friend. It's a smart air fryer. Yep. Yes, indeed. So, yeah. The Poco F4 GT. I'm looking forward to it. This is going to be the first Poco device on the channel to be recorded. Um, I think we might do the video on that tomorrow. And we'll do it like the style that we did it before. Um, with camera samples and stuff. So, we'll, 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 we'll see. We'll see. You're right. But, I'm, um, but in my opinion in my opinion, better than nothing. Yeah, that's true. I think in honest case, it will have um, Google Play services. Let's hope so. Let's hope so. But it's, it's a China only release at the minute. So again, we'll, we'll see how that looks like and how that works. But yeah, fire away people, fire away people. Ask me anything. Ask me anything. Oh, okay. Also, I have to ask if you've noticed much of a big difference with the M1 Max from the base model. I've not, I've not done, I've not done, um, I've not done any major edits on it just yet. I've not. All I've done is um, transferred footage. I've not done any major. Um, I've not done any major edits yet. My, my, the biggest, the biggest edit. The biggest edit challenge is going to be um, my camera comparison videos. And I don't know if I've got any more to do for this year. And it's raining a lot. So do, doing camera comparisons when it's raining all day, every day is gloomy. The sun's not out. There's no real test of HDR and dynamic range. Doing camera comparisons during this year in UK with all, this, all the wetness and rainy and dark all day gloominess, it, it just, it kind of sucks. So... And then obviously, we'll, I need to do my, I need to do my, um, what do you call it, um, the MacBook Pro review. But I mean, it's going to be more powerful. It's going to be more powerful as well as being more powerful, you know, double the storage internally is something that I'm very happy with. And honestly, you saw the price that I got it for. I, it's a three, this, this particular SKU and spec, you can't actually just buy it directly from Apple ready made. It's not a base model. It's a specced up model that you have to actually select the option of the M1 Max 24 core or 32 core. And this is the 24 core. You have to select it and then select the one terabyte. You know, it, it's it's um, it's a three grand skew and I got it for a price that, you know, it's, 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 it's a steal. So yeah, space gray, space gray, space gray. I don't really care for whether it's space gray or silver in my opinion, but it's space gray. 
And then the previous model that I had, the base model has been sold. So the person I has it now is benefiting from having a much, much, much better um, MacBook experience from their 2018 13 inch pro. Yep. Let me just get some water. <sighs> on a normal on a normal day i wouldn't have i would i wouldn't have upgraded honestly let me let me let me really 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 be if you're a video editor you should not be using anything less than a 14 inch macbook pro base model the only thing i would recommend you do with that base model is just try and get one terabyte of storage that's the only thing I'd recommend you to do. Upgrade internal storage as possible. But even then, you don't need to. My base model M1 Pro, 16 gigs of RAM with 512 gig storage. I, I, I really just want to, it, it, it edits not just a little bit better. It edits way better than my 5900X Ryzen 12 core 24 thread CPU with 32 gigs of RAM and my 12 gigs of VRAM RTX 3060. That base model MacBook Pro edits, way, not, not like a little bit, and the, dip, the difference is so huge. I couldn't mentally, I could not mentally bring myself to ever turn on my PC to edit any video again. I only turn, I, I keep saying, I only turn this PC on just because of the fact that my Gato Cam Link Pro is PCI Express space and it allows me to connect four HDMI based cameras that can do 4K 30 frames a second because it's got because it uses HDMI 4.1 1.4 ports. That is the only reason this PC only serves as a purpose for multi camera live streaming. Which, when you see that I do them, they are really of the highest quality as possible. On top of doing that. It only serves as a means to flash Android software when I'm doing beta videos and having to do manual upgrade videos and stuff, right? So that's that is it. Tada! Everything else, and I don't even like macOS that deep, but I put up with macOS just because the performance and efficiency is just that damn good. As a video editor, I I, I beseech you, and I I don't I don't I'm not even in on Apple that deep, right? I beseech you, do not use anything else except for a MacBook Pro, especially, especially when it comes to using a laptop. Maybe a desktop, you want to build something crazy PC-wise, but even then, I promise you, a Mac, a, a Mac Studio would be a better editing machine than that. Let's have a look. I ended up with one terabyte of storage, and I wish I was patient enough to go for custom build as I always run out. No, look, the thing is, yeah. The thing is, the thing is, Chris, with Apple, anything more than one terabyte of storage, it's just not worth it. It may be worth it in your head in terms of the convenience of having two terabytes, four terabytes, or eight terabytes of storage, but the cost per storage and gigabytes, it, it's just too much. And anything past one terabyte, use external. In my opinion, just use external. The spend even up to two terabytes, unless you're unless you're really, really just wanting to flex on board, in my opinion, it's not even worth it. 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 Man, today has really been mundane.
All right, people. Just one more minute. One more minute and we're going to shut shop. One more minute and we're going to shut shop. Really appreciate all your support tonight. Sorry that my energy has been a bit lower. Like I said, I just uh, Friday was just such a mad day, man. Uh, the, the 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 live stream with Xiaomi and then the, you know, Wembley, Bo Wembley Box Park Pixel 7 and Team Pixel event. The amount of people we saw there was just crazy. And that night was a movie. That night was a movie. One of the, one of just, one of the, Friday was just one of the best days ever. Live for days like that. And I really, really appreciate the brands that really rock with, you know, just everything, all things related to Lover of Tech Media and all the people that they allow me to come through and bring through and pattern up and enjoy with. I really, really do appreciate it. But with that being said, Uh, the silence speaks like, oh, man, the computer doesn't even want to connect to the home internet. I don't know why. Nothing makes sense this Monday, um, but it's it's Monday and heavy. I've got B-roll to record, so I'm going to record some B-roll. I'm going to do a low-key all-nighter-ish, um, but um, we go, we go, we go. And again, have a good night, everyone. That indeed being said, I hope you're all well and safe during this time. I will catch you in the next one. Peace.